mine then. Hello everyone and welcome to the very first uh, Jurassic World Evolution Complete Edition live stream. They said it couldn't be done, but we uh, found a way to put Jurassic World Evolution on Nintendo Switch and we could not be more excited. My name is Jens Eirik. I am part of the community team here at uh, Frontier Developments and uh, it's going to be my esteemed pleasure to uh, guide you through the uh, following hour or so uh, of uh, live streaming uh, where we're going to be uh, showing you uh, as much as we can of Jurassic World Evolution on uh, Jurassic World Evolution Complete Edition on Nintendo Switch. But uh, I won't be here alone. I have two uh, lovely chaps uh, with me in the form of uh, game director Richard Newbold and uh, senior audio designer uh, Duncan McKinnon. Hello, boys. How are you doing? Evening, Jens. Evening, Jens. How's it going with you, Duncan? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, Thank you for having us. So excited. It's it's very exciting stuff to have you both here. Uh, it's really exciting to be able to finally uh, stream this game because it's been, I've been sort of uh, having it sort of be a part of my life for so long now, and I suddenly I can finally I can show it off to to the good good people over on uh, on the internet. Um, I'm gonna quickly jump in to see if we have any uh, any people we recognize uh, from chat here. I see we have uh, Reen and Rex over on YouTube, Fantastic Red Eye over on YouTube. Arctic uh, AJB over on uh, Twitter, over on uh, Twitch, uh, I mean, and um, and uh, uh, sorry. Let me know if there's any. Uh, let me know if the uh, audio is uh, sounding okay, or if there's any uh, doubling up or anything. I think we should be uh, good to go, but you never know how these uh, things run when it comes yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Can to I just, Jens, can, can I, I just say? Can I just when say you've when you have introduced, you mentioned how it's the first time. This is completely different to how we normally do things. Normally we're sat next to each other in one room and we're doing this and it's kind of real cozy and having a, um, a great time. And in, in a, this, this new situation is so weird. How I'm sat downstairs in a room by myself. Yeah. It's just slightly surreal. So, and I just want to say a big thanks to you and the community team and the tech team that have, have set this up so that we can show this amazing game out to the, the wider world in such challenging circumstances. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for all of that because it's, it's, it's happened, we did it, as you said, we did it and it's, it's different but we're still doing it. It is, uh, it is truly amazing to, to be able to, to get all this done and uh, yeah, sorry for, uh, for the slight delay in start, we had some minor technical difficulties but we <coughs> thank you to the amazing uh, tech team here at Frontier, we were able to uh, solve it. And yeah, thank you Rich for, for uh, coming with me and also to you Duncan for, for calling in <laughs> from, uh, from your lovely home with your lovely uh, lovely uh, uh, lighting. Yeah, setup my, got my strange purple room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks really great, though. I got to say, it looks really, yeah. really, really good. Uh, all right. So, um, Jurassic World Evolution Complete Edition. Uh, Rich, why don't you break it down for us? How how did this all start? Like, what what's in this amazing package? So this is uh, Jurassic World Evolution Complete Edition. So it is. Um, everything we've, already, we've been doing on Jurassic World Evolution up to now, so uh, it's the base game, it is all of the paid uh, content that we've released on the other platforms, and all of the updates that we've made to the game as well. And we've bundled it all together, and we're bringing it to the Nintendo Switch uh, so for is, people yeah, to enjoy. Essentially the sort of, yeah, complete package of everything yeah. you can expect from, uh, from Jurassic World Evolution. Yeah, it's all the, the love and hard work that we put into the game, bringing it um, to players originally, and then all that um, post-release content that we've been doing as well, um, all of the, the new ideas and the new content. So, yeah. mm. so um, people who uh, might not be familiar with you, uh, Rich, as game director, what is, your, uh, what is your job on this project? It's a very good question. I do wonder <laughs> myself. So um, I was the executive producer on Jurassic World Evolution, um, and then this is my first role as game director, and it's, it's a slightly different role as game director than it is to um, kind of other projects. So in this kind of generally game director is the guiding voice and the kind of the arbiter of what the game is, it's, it's content and it's direction, the ambition, what we're doing. And we interact with the team itself and then the wider publishing marketing team about bringing the game to, to players, to fans and uh, working with the, the, the wider management team at Frontier as well about the project itself. Mm -hmm. On this, in this role, 
I kind of already had the game ready. There's not really any um, big creative decisions to be making on Jurassic World Evolution on the Switch. It's it's taking the work that we've been doing as a team and then making decisions about putting it together and how we bring it towards the Switch. So it's um, a lot of, the, instead of having kind of the directional uh, conversations about what we're doing with the game, it's more of a, a kind of development side of which, which is the best direction to take the solutions to the challenges of bringing it to the Nintendo Switch instead. So. Um, for me, it's been such a great thing as well as my first role as game director because it's I, I love Jurassic World Evolution. I've been on it for, for years now, and yeah. I just love I love playing the game, and I've loved making the game, and I've loved the team that we uh, I've been working with, and all the working with the the talent as well, and just being in this franchise that has been such a big thing for me since I was a kid yeah. um, up till now, and I get to every day work in a Jurassic game, and it's I just get to keep doing that, and it's great, and I just yeah. love that. We're all so here that's because kind we. Of, Sorry, we're all here because we love video games and we love Jurassic mm. World and Jurassic Park and dinosaurs yeah. and all that good, good stuff. Yeah, um, so that's so that's what I do really. Um, it's kind <laughs> of it's not it's hard to define. So yeah. thank you for asking me directly. <laughs> Put me on the spot. What about uh, what about you, Duncan? What's your been what's been your role in this uh, this project? Yeah, so um, I've been working with. Um, Mo the uh, audio code guys um, to optimize um, everything we did on Jurassic World Evolution uh, so that it runs beautifully on the Switch so that it sounds great um, and so that we don't overwhelm the Switch with uh, with too much audio information. Um, we're, in a, we're in a fairly privileged position on the other consoles that we're able to um, up to a point do um, very ambitious things in a very simple way. Uh, on the Switch we can still do those ambitious things we have to be a lot more careful with uh, with how much we throw at it. Mm. So um, my my role was to take the fantastic mix that we've worked on for for three or so years on Jurassic World Evolution uh, and translate that onto the new bit of hardware uh, and do it in such a way that you don't miss anything. That we're not we're not um, not changing that core experience um, and. Something else that I really wanted was to actually just try and improve it a little bit um, <laughs> to take the technical constraints and see if see if we can make it better. Um, right. And I, I think in in quite a, quite a lot of ways we have improved it even uh, we've improved the audio even on the switch. Right. Um, so yeah, it's been I, it's been really fun. Yeah, I I think uh, we and the audience may have been uh, staring at this uh, main menu paid for. for so long. Why don't you? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, don't I'll you move up and down a bit. There we go. Why don't right. you uh, You're hit that uh, continue button there? and we can jump right into the game. So um, we're going to be jumping into uh, still somewhat early in the game. Uh, this is um, the second island that you come to. It's Ile Muerta. And uh, this should be like just pretty much right at the beginning. I set a lot of this stuff up uh, and I took, the, I took the office switch home with me yesterday. Played it for about five hours in bed, uh, yeah. handheld only. And that was an incredible experience, I got to say. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think uh, we're gonna we're gonna release some dinosaurs. We're gonna hopefully cure some dinosaurs. I've given you, I've given you two uh, diseased dinosaurs, Rich, and hey, uh, some oh. uh, missions here. But uh, I think for for the the first part, if we just select the um, the creation lab on the left there, there should be a dinosaur in there ready to be sent out. Almost. Oh, so close. Oh, so, yeah. so close. I thought so I had it. So this is Weta, which is one of the, as you say, it's one of the early islands in the yep. main campaign yep. that the, the game has. Yeah. And so, you've, upgraded, uh, oh, you've been upgrading its viability as well, making oh sure. Yeah. Let's send this baby out. I love this moment when the gates slide open <laughs> and the, the dinosaur comes either skittering through or like trampling through or just it gives, uh, it gives something really, really cool to the, to the game. Yeah, so I really love this, this stuff right here. Yeah, we always want to make these like these moments where you're coming face to face with a dinosaur um, for a first time. If it's one of the, the a, a new geno, uh, a new species that you've not created before, um, really be impactful. So we we put that camera really close, um, to kind of really get you um, to see that experience of getting a dinosaur coming and just roar at your face. Like, yeah. and the dinosaurs are the stars of the show. We 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 want this to. We've always. Our ambition has always been that the dinosaurs are the, the best dinosaurs you've ever seen in a video game. And that's something that we, we, we always push, no matter what we decide to do, that's always kind of the key thing. So even on the Switch, we, we uh, drives the decisions we've been making. So yeah, we want to look as good as possible. This one is hungry. He is very hungry. She, sorry. She. She is very hungry. I'm absolutely sorry. My apologies to everyone out there. Um, so uh, Duncan, can you talk, talk about some of the, um, some of the uh, audio work? 
Yeah, so um, most, most of it really was optimization. Um, I kind of look at it as um, when, a, when, when a compression algorithm compresses down a piece of music, you get rid of all the stuff that's there, but you can't hear to make the file smaller. And um, we kind of had to do that uh, on this game. So um, we're on, the, on one of the consoles or PC, we'd have say 60 or 70 different sounds playing at once, lots of them fairly inaudible. Uh, we, we managed to work out which, of those, which were those sounds and just either get rid of them, like take them out of the mix entirely, or, um, or we, would, we would rework certain elements so that they wouldn't have them in the first place. So things like um, the helicopters, the monorails, um, lots of lo lots of those were, were simplified in a way that is inaudibly different, I hope, um, but that it takes a lot less processing power for it to work. Um, things like the dinosaurs, we already had a, had a lot of audio systems in place uh, so that we didn't actually need to do um, much optimization on the sound design side. Um, Code-wise, uh, we, we do a bit, but really um, our, our systems are so scalable that they kind of just worked out of the box. Cool. That sounds like an amazing job that you guys have done. Uh, I think, Rich, you might want to build a research center so we can cure these dinosaurs. Because okay. I, think we have, I don't think I have the cure. I don't think I had the cure for, for this stuff uh, unlocked. Um, so yeah, um, but uh, for everyone new uh, out there joining us who hasn't um, you know, familiarized yourself with this game already, uh, what is Jurassic World Evolution, uh, Rich? So, uh, and I'm driving as well. So Jurassic World Evolution <laughs> is um, a management game where you're in control, you're fulfilling the, the vision of Dr. John Hammond or Simon Masrani, where you get to build Jurassic World and, or Jurassic Park in the, the, uh, the Jurassic Park campaign and kind of fulfill uh, the, the desire, the wish of what would happen if you were building these parks. So mm -hmm. you're in control, you're building the parks, you're the one that brings the dinosaurs to life and you're building facilities that appeal to guests, you know, it's a uh, the theme park, so you have to build facilities that not only have dinosaurs that are um, happy in their welfare, so this triceratops is obviously yeah, all the they're doing a poor job, they're, they're poorly, so you have to make Sorry. sure their health is fine, um, but they also appeal to guests as well, so there's um, kind of a theme park aspect as well, so you've got to build dinosaurs, make sure your guests can see them and, and build a park around that, hmm. but it's not Jurassic unless something goes wrong. Yep. Uh, so it's about making sure these dinosaurs are happy because if they're not happy, they're going to escape. They're going to eat your guests. And obviously, not all I... of them eat guests, but there's going to be uh, an element of that. We have other elements of peril as well, whether it's sabotage or um, tornadoes. So they, um, they come in and kind of give that chaos feeling of yeah. something going wrong. Um, and it's how about you, how you as a, manage, as a facility manager deal with that. Right. Um, so we have different teams, such as the ACU team, who deal with the escaped dinosaurs. Uh, what do you want? Um, and it was bracken poison. Bracken poison, yep. Sorry, you get to my uh, talking out loud. Um, and then um, ranger teams as well to help um, deal with things like sickness that your dinosaurs might have um, and cure them if need. So we need to, uh, we're researching a cure. So there's a, a kind of research system as well of you researching upgrades and um, cures for your sicknesses that your ranger teams can then um, apply to your triceratopses things like that so there's um originally the base game involved a campaign and the five it's, you know, we, we built built a campaign around the five deaths um, la cinco muertes um which is very easy to uh, translate the five deaths um mm -hmm. which are key islands from uh, two one of the key islands from the original films is the sauna um is part of this island chain called the five deaths um, and this and Dubai is outside of that. But we created a fictional story about you moving island to island, build, building these facilities in. Um, along with the journey are familiar characters from um, the Jurassic franchise. So uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm, reprised by Jeff Goldblum, is mm -hmm. um, back, and he helps guide you as you build these facilities and deal with the, the chaos. And there's something wrong with my ranger station. Uh, I think it might not have power. Because we've added that extra science. Yes. So yeah, so there's an, uh, this is the other side of you building um, facilities is you know, to make sure everything's powered yep. um, and running smoothly. Um, I, and I, think, I, I think I've given you a park that's been uh, 
you know, I've given you a bit of a challenge to, to run this park uh, here, Rich, because I noticed that you have at least two dead, dead dinosaurs right now, and I apologize for that, but uh, that's, that's how it is in Jurassic uh, um, Evolution. And then um, that was a Jurassic World Evolution that we released in uh, June 2018. I think time has become so messy recent this mm. year. Um, and then since then, we've released um, three narrative expansion PDLCs. There's one focused around Dr. Henry Wu, who is from the original Jurassic Park. He's the scientist that helped create dinosaurs, and he returns in Jurassic World as um, the, the scientist behind the Indominus Rex, that big scary one that can camouflage in the Jurassic World. And then we have a story about Claire Deering, um, uh, the Bryce Dallas Howard from Jurassic World, and she's um, it's based around her character, kind of the growth that she has by the end of that film. So it's a story about her looking after dinosaurs and, and kind of um, creating a sanctuary for them to live in. And then we have our last narrative expansion, which was uh, Return to Jurassic Park, which was you going back in time, as it were, to the Jurassic Park films and you working with Dr. Um, Alan Grant, Dr. Ellis Sattler, Dr. Ian Malcolm to create the original Jurassic Park with mm. Dr. Hammond. And we bundled all of that together along with multiple dinosaur packs where we took the we added even more dinosaurs to our original big dinosaur list yeah. we bundled all of that together onto the nintendo switch and i, and I, I breathe i finally <laughs> breathed then that's how much stuff we had because i yeah. finally breathed at the end of that sentence and um, i i see a lot of people in the various chats asking is this gameplay from captured from a nintendo switch yes we are streaming yes live the, from a is, nintendo switch there's the controller yeah. And it's just there. Rich um, is sitting there with the Pro Controller. I was yeah. playing this exact copy of the game yesterday for about five hours uh, at uh, home. And the, yeah, like in, in, the, uh, in handheld mode, everything looked great. Everything ran fantastic. Uh, it sounded amazing. All the, uh, all the audio, all the music, everything. And it's just, it was a really fun experience. And the only reason I had to stop was because it got late and I had to go to bed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I spent a lot of time setting uh, all this stuff up so Rich can, uh, can uh, could uh, take, inherit take, my, take charge of my park uh, while we were badly. live on stream. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it is, uh, it is, yeah, it is the, uh, the game that you know and love if you've already been uh, playing it, allowing you to uh, sort of rediscover it, come back in, maybe see if you know, maybe this time things will be uh, different. Maybe you'll be doing things in a different way than you did the, the first time around. And for new players, this is the, uh, uh, the, their like opportunity to experience everything that uh, Jurassic World Evolution has to offer. And like playing it last night, it was really fun to, uh, to yeah, re-experience it again and just f seeing all the things that I could unlock, all the different things that I like missions and uh, contracts and things that I had to go to to get everything that I needed to have this set up and it was really cool at one point i uh like you mentioned earlier uh, rich there's a lot of plates that you need to be spinning a lot of things that you need to take a look at at the same time so i thought like i was a little thirsty so i got up got a drink put my switch down on the bed and thought now i'll just let the game idle in the background and then i came back and both of my uh, uh, uh both of my um, carnivore dinosaurs had escaped randomly from their enclosure and had started eating the guests. And at that point I was like, oh yeah, this is the uh, Jurassic World Evolution gameplay that I know and love. Even though I'm on the starting, on the first island, uh, I'm still able to, uh, there's still that element of chaos. There's still that element of dinosaurs breaking out. Um, for those of you who uh, may not be experienced with the game, Richard, Richard right now is trying to medicate these dinosaurs and heal them of uh, the, um, of the sickness that they have using uh, a uh, team of rangers that he is controlling himself using the uh, using the uh, controller. He can also just assign tasks to them and then they will carry them out uh, automatically as well. Yeah, for us we wanted to give the players that moment of being in control and dealing with it yourself or you have the opportunity to um, get your um, give ask your ranger teams to deal with it themselves but yeah. We wanted to, if you feel that you could do a better job, we want to give you that moment of being in control because you know, it's it, and then it's for you, it's a balance of um negotiating what time and where you want to focus your energies. If there's a T Rex, that dinosaur that, is, yeah, you've got three dead dinosaurs, Rich. I'm very sorry about that. Um, and then, yeah, if they die, you just have to sort of pick them up and carry on and try to try to do everything all over again. 
Oh, oh, my word. Oh, the Dracorex. My Dracorex is a kicking off. Okay, cool. Yeah, that happens. That happens. So it's been uh, it's been very important for the entire team here to bring like the full Jurassic World Evolution creative experience to to Nintendo Switch. That's been the main priority, and and uh, everyone's been been working from home as well. And I have to say that the team like really knocked this out of the park. Like it's been out of the Jurassic Park, if you will. Oh, I just, I just thought of that. You just thought you just thought of that. I actually oh, did guys, just think of I that. Just, I just came across that. What's it say in the notes? Do the pun. <laughs> Oh, okay. I swear there aren't puns in the notes, but there should have been. There should probably <laughs> have been. Uh, yeah, it's been a mix. It's been a challenge, but it's been amazing about how the the team have responded to that challenge and how much support the frontier have given us as well. So mm. obviously we we norm, normally um, in the usual circumstances, this building is 500 people in, and we we all sit together and we work on the projects together, and then yeah. suddenly we were all transitioned to our homes safely. Um, and the, the Frontier team, the operations team, the tech team have been so amazing in providing us with um, you know, get transportation, getting us all their um, support since then on technical issues, operation issues, and supporting us in our well-being as well, making sure that obviously with this, there is a, a pandemic going on. It's, it is, um, <laughs> it's unprecedented and it's having, you know, it has a big impact on people, whether it's mm, the, where sure. you're working from or the, the situation itself. And they've been really good at supporting us in making sure that we have that support which we need, um, reaching out to us, and we are struggling to to talk to somebody about it. So it's, um, I mean, with all of that stuff happening as well, the team continued to work on the, the, the Switch version and really um, brought it home. Um, yeah. So it was, it's not one of those project challenges of risks that you, you ever consider thinking of dealing with, um, mm. but it happened and it's been amazing to see uh, the fruits of that. Obviously I'm sat playing on my Switch. Not my switch. Playing on a, playing the game on the switch, and it's exactly. great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been amazing. It's been so, a different year. Absolutely. So, Duncan, right. what's what's been your what's been your favorite part of of this project of uh, just bringing it uh, bringing the game to a to the switch platform, and then just the project in general? Oh, it was definitely um, it was definitely just when everything started working. Um, there was just an optimization pass at some point, and the game the game went from from running at very few frames per second to mm. just looking absolutely fantastic. Over the course right. of a couple of weeks, just yeah. everything kind of came in together. Um, and that that was that was just amazing to see. Uh, like ev everyone was just pulling together and, um, you know, like Rich said, we're all just working remotely, um, dropping in on meetings every day and just seeing the game progress at an amazing pace. Um, it, was, it was completely fantastic. So uh, I have a great comment here from, uh... Well, great piece of feedback, in my opinion, from Odette Farlake saying that this looks so beautiful. It's really amazing thinking about how much work got put into this game, seeing how good it looks right now. This game is going to be amazing. I can't wait for it to come out. We really appreciate that, Odette. Like, it's comments. It's actually comments like that that just make everything worth it. Like, all the, the you know, the sometimes late hours and all the work that we put into everything. Like, it's just, it's really, really great to see that players, you know, respond to the things that we make and the things that we put into uh, the game that we make. It's really, really great. Uh, all right, so uh, what are you doing uh, in the game now, Richard? I am, so we have, a, a, the, for those that don't know Jurassic World Evolution, you can upgrade your buildings. So mm -hmm. um, because this team, I generally like my teams to be, I just give them, I like to delegate to them. I don't micromanage them. So I'm giving them upgrades so that the AI that are driving them have slightly quicker reload speed and accuracy. So if they are dealing with a problem for me, um, they'll do it a bit better, so I don't have to get involved again. Sure. Um, so I can, I kind of prefer playing that way. Um, yeah. Just kind of more of a, a high level um, thing. And then I built a Struth Mimus, just because the Struth Mimuses that I had in my park, there's only a couple of them. So I thought they I'd need some more. They need some more friends. And you get to see my dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, I really like this one as well. Like it comes running out and stops a bit. It's like, what's going on? All right, it's I'm a dinosaur. Keep running. It, it <laughs> this realizes. Is my favorite dinosaur. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, totally. It, it reminds me of a friend of mine. I call it the Bethosaurus. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I just absolutely love this one. Uh, um, what's your favorite dinosaur, Rich? I like a Triceratops. I'm boring. Um, I have good reason, though. So whenever mm. I do get asked this a few times, I've been on the dinosaur game for a while, people do ask me. Yeah. And I go, Triceratops. And they go, oh, some people do. And it's because the, the reason was, it's, it's, it's a boring dinosaur. It's, a, it's you know, it's 
it's a famous dinosaur, it's kind of a go-to one. But it's because when I first watched Jurassic Park, right. you, you kind of built up the awe of these dinosaurs when you see them for the first time in the, the herding um, scene. And then when they get in the, they're going around the park themselves, you see it kind of up close. You see the other characters up close with it and yeah. it feels like a living thing. Um, Steven Spielberg and the team on the Jurassic Park made it come alive mm. so well that it felt real. And then the first reaction, the first emotion you have with this real dinosaur is empathy. It's sick. It's poorly. Yeah, absolutely. So it kind of struck a kind of a tone of me at that age of um, kind of related, like related with, like, you know, read them in books and they're just still images yeah. or they're it's a terrifying T-Rex killing a different dinosaur, but the, <laughs> the color palette is super bright and stuff like that. But this was like a real thing um, that I, I connected with and felt alive. And that was mm. kind of like, wow, this is a real, this could be, it could be a real thing. And that's yeah. why uh, it kind of cemented it. That age is a favorite and has always been there. Um, so it's mostly down to the film itself, which is yeah. why I get to work. You know, love this I want to, I want to ask chat, what is your, uh, what's, what their <laughs> favorite dinosaur is like all of chat. I want to see what people, uh, people like uh, what kind of dinosaurs they uh, they like uh, I was always also very fond of the uh, um, the uh, Triceratops mostly because of the uh, blue Power Ranger when I watched that show back in the day oh, of course um, yeah because you know he was a bit of a, a nerdy guy I was a bit of a nerdy guy so it kind of uh, it kind of uh, even itself worked itself out that way I uh, eventually <laughs> realized uh, okay, and um, what we got? I can't see the chat. You're, you're my, you're my voice. Yeah, I'm work, I'm, you're I'm my work, review of the chat. I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, so, uh, what is this stuff uh, that you're doing now, Rich? So, um, as part of the kind of the feeling, you as part of the building the dinos building the dinosaurs. When you're bioengineering the dinosaurs, yeah. is science. Uh, you are responsible for collecting um, the genome for those dinosaurs. So mm. like in the films, you, you sending out, um, you send out um, teams to dig sites throughout the world of, um, where of, based on real world science of where you would find these dinosaurs in our world. Um, yeah, but maybe we can, uh, maybe we can bring up the uh, expedition yeah. screen so people can see what that looks like. This one, no, that one. Um, so you send out teams to uh, um, various sites. Hell Creek is, is one of the, famous one, um, big collection of dinosaurs in real life found there. Um, but in the game, because it's a video game, our teams of, of um, archaeologists successfully always find dinosaur DNA and using the power of uh, film science that based in Jurassic Park, uh, they can bring them back to life. So you send out your teams to these sites, they collect genome, and once mm. you've got over 50% of a dinosaur genome, uh, you can then bioengineer it. So um, you send out the dig site and they bring you back fossils. So in this screen, I have a bit of Triceratops genome and some Ankylosaurus genome. So uh, they bring you back fossils. Your scientists then, um, I'll get to those in a second, uh, mm -hmm. bring back um, the genome. Your scientists extract it from the fossils and then you turn those into a, a, a real life dinosaur. So I'm going to extract some more Triceratops and some Ankylosaurus. Yeah. And then in our Hammond creation labs, named after Dr. John, John Hammond. Adam, of course. Um, you create your dinosaurs, your, your bioengineering. So these are all the dinosaurs that I have over 50% genome for, so I can create them. Um, and your success of, there's a chance that these won't survive the incubation process um, because you've only got a small percentage of um, their genome. So the higher percentage of genome, the more chance you have of success. Mm -hmm. So we can't make an ankylosaur yet because we don't have enough genome. Yeah. But we can make a Cryptosaurus or a Cynoceratops. Um, but our chances of that surviving are 60% um, or 58%. And then you can use upgrades on the buildings to increase the chance of um, that die roll working. So, yeah. So, yeah. so um, I think I was making some Jackorexes. I think yeah. I was, yeah. And yeah, then I think so. I can then modify that genome. So like you being, doc uh, we want to personify, give you the personification of the characters from the film. So your Dr. John Hammond, your Simon Mazzarani building parks. Mm. In this case, your Dr. Henry Wu, you're in, you're in the genome. You're doing science stuff, technical term. Uh, so here I can change the cosmetic uh, gene of this Dracorex, so I can leave it as it kind of the null version. 
or we can add an alpine pattern, um, an arid or an arid pattern by bringing in real animal DNA, just like he did with the, the frog DNA in the first film. So, and that changes the dinosaur that you get. So if I bring in some, and these are based, this is Latin, but I can never remember which ones they are. So this, like the Pagona Viticeps, that's I, a real I animal. Know, I know that very little Latin. The chat's probably going to tell me, and yeah. be like, you should know this, but Maybe. I'm from Yorkshire. We don't really do Latin in Yorkshire. Okay. <laughs> Apologies to everyone in New York that does know yeah. Um And again, with this one, you're bringing in real wood. So I'll get a picture on this one. So that's obviously crocodile DNA. Yeah. So you bring that one in and it will increase the toughness of this dinosaur. So the defense rating of this Dracorex will be higher. Mm. So if this Dracorex is in a fight with a different dinosaur, it compares the attack and defense and you know, it affects the how much damage it might take on the health. Mm. Um, and then you can just things like lifespan. So make it live longer. <laughs> The resilience, that's um, how susceptible you are to disease, sicknesses. Um, viability increases as you're messing about with the mix, as you're adding more stuff to the mix of the DNA, moving yeah. it further away from the original pure kind of Dracorex gen genome, it will decrease your viability chance. But then you as a player can add upgrades to the building and increase the chance of it, so you can kind of offset um, the more uh, changes you make. And then the last one is the rating. So the more you change it, the more it appeals to your guests. So as we saw in Jurassic World, the Indominus Rex, that terrifying hybrid, was a mix of multiple things, uh, multiple dinosaurs um, and other things, and that was quite appealing to guests. So we've kind of taken that yeah. aspect of that film, um, of the film, and brought it into the, the gameplay side. Um, and I'm going to quickly make this dinosaur because there's a storm coming in, and I'm Ooh. probably going to have to deal yeah. with this storm. We're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to do something about that. And but uh, I think you yeah you have some storm shelters and some storm protection. You things. did uh, put some storm protection in, so I'm just gonna yeah. make sure that this because a bit like again we wanted to bring in the feeling of Jurassic World where that storm caused so much damage to a, yeah. a functioning park as it were. It wasn't quite functioning really before the storm came in and Edry went rogue. But. <laughs> The storm so, didn't help. Yeah. I, so, I want to I want to give a shout out to uh, Lagoshi Del Rey uh, on uh, Twitch for saying because of you I'm finally in school to be a paleontologist and archaeologist. So that's wow. amazing. Congratulations. Very jealous. That's really really cool. Um, uh, there was also a question here from Optimus Road Warrior Prime, which I think is an excellent username. Uh, which dinosaur was the most fun bringing to the game? We can uh, start with you, Rich. If you have a Oh, that's just from the start. Wow. Um, sorry, I'm just going to deal with some poor park management um, yeah. whilst I'm talking. Um, <laughs> I actually found some of the PDLC dinosaurs um, the most interesting, I think, because we had a lot of. Um, I'm trying to put this. I'm trying to replace that pylon. There we go. Um, we, myself and uh, Pete Giles, the art director, we spent a lot of time uh, making sure that each dinosaur we put in a dinosaur pack um, was chosen carefully to make sure that we brought enough uh, brought a lot of personality and mm. ones that the community um were fans of and things that we felt um were really good dinosaurs as well um i really like the i think the nigosaurus was probably one of my favorite ones mm -hmm. because when we looked at the we saw it in a, um we looked at some investigation into the skeleton it had such an iconic jawline and it looked like a lawnmower and it was just so <laughs> different and it's like we have all these other dino all the other dinosaurs were um the kind of kind of a classic feel to them yeah. in a way mm -hmm. but that one was so different and we just found it so um exciting because of the challenge of having a different um jawline and just how we could bring that to life in a way that it didn't look goofy right. um which is another part of the decisions of the di and the direction we take this game is we mm. make sure that our dinosaurs are, are jurassic dinosaurs as right. it were so yeah. um they're authentic to the feeling and the vibe if they're not already from the film if we're bringing a new one to life mm. um, we want to make it feel as though it would you could see it in a jurassic movie and it would fit that palette that yeah. color that's that style that they've been building over the years yeah. in their, their dinosaur creation so um, and then we kind of weave that in with the scientific accuracy and we try and find a balance between the two. Um, but the, the first thing always kind of tend, takes the priority, so we always push it towards mm. um, Jurassic over science if, need, maybe, yeah. uh, if needed. So that one was probably gone because we, we just saw it and it was like, wow, that one, that one will, it's so different that it's it kind of, <laughs> it, it fitted the remit of you know, being different. And, yeah. and that kind of really goes, 
goes quite quite far. Mm. What about you, Duncan? Do you have a, a one that was your favorite to to work on from like an audio uh, perspective? I know you've told uh, the story about the the trombone and the the Paris oh, yeah. Office, yeah. Uh, sound before. Yeah, the um, I, well, just like Rich said, I think the the DLC dinosaurs were definitely the most fun ones to right. work on. Um, especially the um, the three herbivore pack ones, the Nigerosaurus, the Homolocephali, and um, there was another one there. I can't remember, can't remember what it was. Um, they they were just really fun because we um we we were kind of we had we didn't really have it have any um in, we didn't have any um baggage with them. We didn't have to make them sound like anything from the franchise. Right. Um. So we could kind of go to town and just get really 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 creative on them. Um, yeah. So as as long as as long as uh, like the the license holder says like yeah this is this sounds good like this sounds yeah. like it would in the movies. Well, we we've got we've got a really good relationship with with, with Universal and um they yeah. uh, they kind of just trust us to do what we think is right. So um, I mean it, we were only constrained by um by by our own sort of sensibilities. Um, uh, like the the Homilus Ethely was was one that was a lot of fun. Uh, there were so many sounds on there. It's so expressive, um, and it was really enjoyable um to make this thing that was so so cute, so mm -hmm. adorable, uh, and then see it get killed in the most brutal way. <laughs> Um, and it was really just really sad. So um, so coming coming up with 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 the sound to you know to to convey that sadness when that thing gets ripped apart that was <laughs> that that was that was something new for us. I mean um, like we we, we 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 all really love we all really love all of the dinosaurs. Um, yeah. And I think most people don't mind when they get eaten, but the homolocephaly, mm. yeah, that's yeah. It's one of the the, the animation team kind of enjoyed. Yeah. Um, begin bringing the new dinosaurs to life as well. So something like the homocephaly, they, they really loved uh, how it was consumed in a, a nice way. But obviously it was still, I mean, Duncan's obviously elaborated, they really get torn to bits. <laughs> but you know, it's picked up and thrown, you know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's whole, I mean, it's like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, um, the, the Indoraptor was another really, really good one to do mm. um, because we, we, we got all the sounds for that before the film even came out and then, um, uh, we, we got to see some sort of preview footage of it, um, and uh, the the animators um, animated that without seeing the movie and made it oh, incredibly wow. close. So yeah, yeah, it was really I, that was a really fun one. Yeah, because I remember I remember seeing it in game and thinking like this looks like it was just sort of plucked straight from uh, Fallen Kingdom because like it had the like the same type of mannerisms had the same type of movement all that kind of stuff and it was so yeah doing it without one seeing the game first that's pretty spot on in my opinion so that's uh, that's really really good um let's see there was another question in the chat that i saw i need to find it now uh, duh, duh, duh. where is it where is it where is it um um no, oh, I can't find it. Never mind. So, um, yeah, Richard is also demonstrating another part of the game right now, the contracts. Yeah, so alongside the, the kind of the story missions that we have in the game, we have a, a contract system. So when you're working in uh, Jurassic World Evolution, you're working mm. in building facilities, um, there are kind of three divisions that help uh, build the parks with you. So we have Dr. Dewar, who is part of the science division mm -hmm. uh kind of remit is to make sure that the dinosaurs are um as scientific as possible so either more as accurate as possible to the genome or you mixing more um of the experimental stuff in uh, that's kind of her remit as a scientist lambert in the middle uh, george lambert is um part of the security division he likes you to test make sure that you've got um dinosaurs that are um Ferocious and making sure that your security teams are able to deal with them. So he's kind of making, he's testing the, the, the security aspect of yeah. building a uh, facility. And Isaac is part of the entertainment division. So he wants to build a theme park for the guests. Mm. So what they do is they'll pop up every now and then and give you a contract and go, hey, can you do this thing for us? And we'll give you some money. And it adjusts their reputation as well. So mm. um, you as you build up a reputation with a certain division, it'll allow you to unlock certain things. Um, but as a downside, if your kind of reputation with one division is too low, then we might have sabotage gameplay um, turn up if uh, people within that division uh, become unhappy with you, they might lash out at you by doing reasonable things like opening up all your gates. A reasonable response to you just being, you know, just ghosting them a bit and ignoring them. Completely this, reasonable. 
Some, I something like that. Something like that happened to me uh, yesterday when I was uh, when I was playing this because I was uh, first okay. focusing on because like I got a bunch of the security contracts. I was like, all right, I'm just going to go down the security path. And then uh, as I kept going down the security path, uh, science and, and entertainment weren't too happy about that. And at some point, it said on Isaac, risk sabotage risk high. And then at that point, <laughs> the power in my park started going out a lot more often than I. Uh, <laughs> Usually, than, than it usually does, and so I realized that oh yeah, there's someone from entertainment <laughs> just going in and just smashing up everything because they don't like it when I just don't like it when I uh, when I don't do what they tell me to do. But uh, you know, it's uh, it is how it is uh, sometimes. And then uh, yeah, you're uh, earning money, of course. You have to mind your uh, your um, mind your finances, fi finances, sure. your guest needs, all that kind of all that good good stuff. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just trying to see if I can make some more money because I, I was running low. So by completing contracts, I can kind of earn immediate um, money as well to kind of mm. couldn't really get something because I was trying to build a couple of triceratopses, mm. but I because I want to make sure the triceratopses are happy when they come out. I was going to build two uh, because if you I think they have, can be alone, can't they, for a little bit? I mean, they could, they can be alone, <laughs> but you but just want them to have friends. Yeah, yeah okay. I always like yeah, to make yeah, sure yeah. it's kind of it's years of playing this game yeah by habit i generally always make sure there's at least two sure just because i mean not, yeah me too and yeah, one yeah. comes out and you've not got enough money yeah you've got one that's sad yeah sad alone <laughs> then's gonna start lashing out and then you want the money to bring a second one in. it's just habit i always bring in two yeah so i still need some extra cash hmm. um and um so. Something that uh, something that we mentioned earlier in the stream, but uh, if you're if you arrive late, then maybe you don't know this. Uh, this stream is uh, about the uh, Nintendo Switch version of Jurassic World Evolution, Jurassic World Evolution Complete Edition, and uh, every all the gameplay footage you see here is uh, captured from a Nintendo Switch. Um, if Richard can hold up the the controller for a bit, just to show that it's just there. That's yeah. not clearly a switch. That's just no, that's the that's just the controller. But yeah, the, the switch is in front of you somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but yeah, just to show that uh, you're you're actually playing it with the, <laughs> with a switch uh, Nintendo Switch Pro. Just controller. doing it with my mind. Yeah. <laughs> that technology hasn't been invented yet, unfortunately. But I really wish they they did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and there's also yeah, with this game being on uh, on Nintendo Switch on the Nintendo Switch platform. It's uh, uh, remarkable. You can just grab the, the console, pull it out of the dock, and suddenly, boom, there it is. You're playing handheld. And uh, the game is the same, whether or not you're playing in docked mode or in handheld mode. And that's one of the things that I really like about it, especially for a game like this, because then you can, I mean, things are a bit different now. But if, if things were, uh, quote unquote, normal uh, without a global pandemic going on, you could uh, take the game with you uh, on the bus, to a cafe, uh, basically anywhere. And you could just keep playing while you're doing uh, something else. Um, like I mentioned early in the stream, I was playing this for about five hours uh, in bed yesterday, all in handheld mode. Uh, it worked really, really well, I felt. It looked really, really well. It sounded really, really good. And uh, I was just kind of amazed when I turned it on. I was like, yeah, this is, this is the game. And it's just... It works how I expected, and everything looks looks as good as I want it to be. And so, I'm slowly considering maybe making the 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 Switch version sort of my main version of uh, Jurassic World Evolution from now on. Yeah, and that was kind of the appeal for us once we we kind of did return to Jurassic Park, and we went, okay, what's the next challenge for us? Obviously, mm. the, since the first game came out, we the in, the industry changes. Obviously, the, the Switch came out, and we have um, such a big love for the switch itself kind of in the team I, I love my switch i'm always um, i'm always playing it so that yeah, was kind too. of what led us to go okay what should we do next what's the next challenge let's bring it to the nintendo switch we have you know there's a there's a whole audience of people that may not have played jurassic world evolution so um kind of that's how we about came to the decision to kind of move the team towards um bringing it to the switch and it's it was a new challenge as well because is it's a different mindset and a different challenge than making more content or mm. doing more um, improvements. So it's been a um, great challenge for us kind of adding it to the the Cobra engine that kind of runs all of our games here at Frontier. It's a yeah. brand new platform for us. We had to, as you say, and now you can now take it, we can pick it up and then take it with you on a Nintendo Switch, which is you know, how does it, how does our game handle transitioning between uh, TV or handheld mode instantly, which is yeah. what the Switch does. And we, you know, to build that into our engine um, and then optimize the game 
uh, optimize the game. Got a weird <laughs> accent, weird voice. Optimize the game to work on the Nintendo Switch as well. Um, so that's been a great challenge of uh, taking, deciding what we wanted to bring to Nintendo Switch, which was everything, yeah. basically. Yeah, because um, it, it is the full game, just mm -hmm. all of it. it, and it's a massive full game as well. And I'm not just yeah. talking about the size of the dinosaurs. Like the, the game is a substantial amount of uh, gameplay time, both in the campaign and then with the DLCs, and then you can start messing around in sandbox mode and basically just build the park that you always wanted to build, uh, of course. And uh, it's been, for me personally, who's only been at Frontier for about six months, it's been really fun to be a part of this project, I feel. Yeah, it's been, uh, I would say, just finding ways to look at what we had. And as Duncan mentioned earlier, we, we had to come up with new solutions to yeah. new solutions to problems that we've never had before. And it gave us an opportunity to, to look at what we were doing and find ways to optimize it and um, make that experience as, as great as possible for um, the portable platform. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been, so it's just so it sounds good in your TV or if you're going headphones on the on the bus. I used to, I keep making reference to people, but like, oh yeah, play the game. I get to play my Switch on the bus. But that was kind of like what we wanted that was part of the ambition of bringing it to the Switch, was that we, yeah. we wanted people to sit on the bus and play it and then go home and put it in their TV and keep playing. So everything um, we did to make sure that it was as great an experience as possible and sounded great and looked really good as well. Yeah. Um, I had my Triceratopses already. Have you uh, gotten the opportunity to play it on, on Switch, uh, Duncan? Um, well, when we were developing it, uh, if I had a bit of playtesting to do, um, I'd just take the Switch downstairs and sit on the sofa and do it, which is a really, really nice way to develop a game, actually. Get away from the desk, you know, uh, pop out in the garden, go and play it out there. It, it, that was that was absolutely wonderful, yeah. Never yeah, done that really before. Is. That was kind of, <laughs> the with the pandemic on and now using our Switches, it's different, we, it allowed us to kind of almost recreate a more real world experience slightly mm. easier because we were at home and we were in a home environment and we could, as Duncan says, go take it to the couch, um, see what it's like, as opposed to maybe being in the office where it's always an office environment and recreating that kind of feeling of what um, the audience would do, what players would do, whether it's yeah. being on the bus, being on the couch, as you, you spent five hours in bed. We don't have, we don't have beds in the office really to, to kind of recreate, not recreate, but kind of get that experience. So by being at home, we, we found a way to kind of use, use that as a, as, as a bit of a positive to make sure it was as great an experience as it could be. Uh, Jonathan, from, Jonathan from YouTube says that I can only imagine people's reaction when hearing a T-Rex roar on the bus or train. Yeah, that'd I mean, be one if, like, if you... I've not got the headphone in properly, <laughs> sorry, 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 my bad. Sorry, sorry it properly. slipped. I just pulled it out and then it slipped. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah. maybe we can, uh, yeah, because you showed uh, some of the management screen stuff earlier, uh, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm working on making a better park. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry so. I gave you a terrible one to, uh, to manage. Hey, it, it's been a great foundation. Okay, that's uh, good. That's great. So yeah, that's, 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 what I, that's what I tried to do. Uh, and West is a good from... island because, you know, we have, the, we have a lovely beach. Mm, um, absolutely. I, I really like the lighting. Uh, on this island because like it's yeah, always it's, it's al almost always golden hours so it's always lighting's... I was going to say this, yeah. it's always golden hour um, yeah it gives it a nice feel a different vibe we always make sure that each of the islands has a, a different it's, it's the tropical islands yeah it's you know, we have to we, we do what we can with the lighting to kind of and the, the shapes of them and the tornadoes to give each one a different feel as well um, so yeah I agree with Matt it's got the sand it's got golden hour perpetually um, perpetually frozen in time like a, a mosquito in amber uh, yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. You just don't get it. Just gonna ignore that one, Jay. It's just like, yeah. No, I was, I was, I was beautiful, Rich, but you just moved on. I'm running the stream. There's input coming in from all kinds of places. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so we can. Uh, I think maybe we can. Yeah, can you just zoom all the way out on the map screen so people can see how big? I then this is. The I second can't map, go I any. That's as far as the camera will go. Yeah, but um, if you just switch to there, we go. But in this view, yeah. I can go all the way. So what is? It's a big one. Oh, it is a really big um, one, and I think the, I think when I first long played, way around then. I think yeah. when I first played this, all like I stretched out on all of it and just had the the um, the, the monorails going yeah. everywhere and all that kind of monorail stuff. monorail all the way around is yeah. the best way to do this one. All right. Um, so yeah, so uh, I think we can uh, start to uh, wrap some of this up. Uh, maybe take a couple of questions from the chat to just see if there's. Uh, uh, 
William York says, can we see more of the carnivores? I want to see someone get eaten. Uh, maybe not on this stream, but maybe on the <laughs> on the next one. Um, how I'm, are trying we? To be, I'm trying to be what? nice here, dude. Yeah. It's, 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 it got in a it lovely is. park. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, were there original concepts in Jurassic World Illusion that ended up being scrapped? I mean, that's what it is for all kinds of games in game development yeah. in general. Yeah, we, we're constantly you know, coming up with ideas, reviewing what the community suggests and seeing how they um, fit with what the, the game is, what the kind of the game pillars are, what we can achieve kind of development wise and prioritizing things. There's, there's always things that we, um, oh, this is, why am I talking whilst trying to do this? Uh, there's always things that you, you wish you did, but you just didn't yeah. have time for. Um, mm. But one of the great things kind of how development has changed in, in I'm gonna sound like an old man, in the, he says slowly trying to do this, but it just tries to stop, 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 stop. Is games has changed as kind of we, the way we give them to players, yeah. you know, as it were. Um, a long time ago, we would finish a game, we would get put on a disc, and then we'd walk away. Or we wouldn't walk away, like, but they would, that was it, that was the game. Um, and what we found with Jurassic World Evolution, especially, was we could put a lot of content in a lot of features in the base game, and knowing that we were going to keep supporting the game um, afterwards. Go, that's a good idea. It's not going to fit right now. It's a lot of work. It's, going to, it's too much risk in adding that into mm. what we've got. Let's do that later. So yeah. things like the, the paleobotany system that we added in Clear, Clear Sanctuary. In Clear Sanctuary. Yep. That was um, some of the systems that we, we wanted to try and get in the, the original game, but um, you know, they, they, we have to take some... We, we try and make sensible decisions about what we're putting in, and then sure. we go, okay, we, we can do it in, uh, an update later. Yeah. And, um, or tell stories later and things like that. So there's there's always stuff like that. And yeah. I think that's the one of the great things about now about development is that we can do that kind of thing. We can we can keep going, we can keep um, adding the stuff we didn't want to do, but we can also add even more stuff mm -hmm. later as well. So it's not just about the things that we didn't do in the base game, it's all about new ideas as well. When we see, you know, millions of players playing the game and getting the community's feedback about what's not working, what yeah. is working, we'd like to have more um, more on the guest side. Like, okay, we'll add your restrooms. Like yeah. things like that. Yeah. There are, there's always more. Oh, why did yeah. we? You know, can we have this dinosaur? And we the, can have that as well. So, if, if I can just take a moment, like the game wouldn't be what it is now if it hadn't been for the the Jurassic World Evolution community who have been been with us, mm, been supportive, definitely. been giving us uh, all kinds of feedback and suggestions and all that good good stuff. Like that has been that has been really an amazing part of uh, of the game, at least for for me when when I joined the project. Uh, Gareth on YouTube asks, any idea if there are any major differences between PC and Switch editions? Um, the Switch, the, the complete edition is the game that you have on PC. All the yeah. same content, all the same mechanics. So exactly, that is it really. Uh, but yeah, we should uh, start to wrap up. So I think, uh, Rich, you can uh, you can keep playing if you uh, if you want to, and uh, I'm uh, just going okay. to uh, just. Just you guys come like make sure to turn the lights. Don't turn the lights off on me when we shut the building up. Yeah, That'd I'll just nice. I'll just Thanks. close I'll just close the door when you're still in the room and just shut the lights off. You can keep playing. It's fine because like you you got the light from the TV, right? So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, thank you very much, uh, Rich, for joining me and for playing. Thank you very much, Duncan, from call for calling in and for sharing. Uh, some of your experiences with the game and with uh, working uh, working on the audio side of things, because I personally think that's always really uh, fun to to get that perspective as well, because I think that's one of the things that people don't always uh, think about when it comes to to game development. So I want to say thank you for for joining me, both of you. Oh, and, thank you for having us. It's always yeah, thanks, so it's great. Me. Yeah, it's always great to play the game and to to show it to um, so many people. Exactly. Um, exactly. I'm so. assuming someone's watching. I'm in a room <laughs> by myself talking Love. to. L you and Duncan. I'm lots assuming of, there's lots of people. Lots of people are watching. Thank you. Lots of people Good. are watching, Rich. All right, I'm going to switch back over here and uh, just reiterate that Jurassic World Evolution Complete Edition is coming to Nintendo Switch on November 3rd. That's Tuesday next week if you're watching this when this goes live. Uh, cost is, I believe, $59.99 USD, Euro, and $49.99 uh, GBP. Um, I believe there's also going to be links in the chat to uh, places where you can uh, pre-purchase, or at least there's a link to then link to the uh, Nintendo eShop where you can uh, where you can purchase the game. And uh, I'm incredibly, incredibly excited 
for uh, for this game to come out. It looks incredible. It sounds incredible. It plays incredible. And uh, I want to say thank you, everyone, for joining me out there in the uh, the, the chat world. And uh, we're going to do a launch stream on launch day, on Tuesday, November 3rd, at sometime. Watch our social channels for uh, all the information you need, uh, because we will announce it there. We're also going to be putting up a couple of polls on uh, Twitter to uh, uh, sort of... Uh, get some suggestions in for some of the things that we're going to do on our launch stream. But uh, until then, I'm just going to say thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Woo! Thanks, guys. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you, it's <laughs> it was really